You don't choose your passions. Your passions choose you. Ever since I was five years old, that's when Neil Armstrong stepped onto the surface of the moon. I've been passionate about space, rockets, rocket engines, space travel. I became a science fiction reader. And I've always known that I wanted to do something having to do with space, and I've spent a lot of time thinking about it for really almost my whole life. Look at Earth. Earth is incredible. Jim Lovell, one of my real heroes, on Apollo 8, while he was circling around the moon, he did something amazing. He put his thumb out, and he realized with his thumb at arm's length, he could cover the whole Earth. Everything he'd ever known, he could cover with his thumb. And he said something amazing. The old saying, I hope I go to heaven when I die. He said, I realized at that moment, you go to heaven when you're born. Earth is heaven. Carl Sagan, so poetic. On that blue dot, that's where everyone you know and everyone you ever heard of and every human being who ever lived, lived out their lives. A very small stage in a great cosmic arena. For all of human history, the earth has felt big to us. Humanity has been small. That's not true anymore. The earth is no longer big. Humanity is big. First of all, of course, I'm interested in space because I'm passionate about it and I've been studying it and thinking about it since I'm a five-year-old boy. But that is not why I'm pursuing this work. I'm pursuing this work because I, I believe if we don't, we will eventually end up with a civilization of stasis which I find very demoralizing. I don't want my great-grandchildren's great-grandchildren to live in a civilization of stasis. We all enjoy a, a dynamic civilization of growth and change, and, and let's think about what powers that. A very fundamental long-range problem is that we will run out of energy on Earth. This is just arithmetic, it's going to happen. As animals, humans use 97 watts of power. That's our metabolic rate as animals. But as members of the developed world, we use 10,000 watts of power. And we get a lot of benefit from it. We live in an era of dynamism and growth. You live better lives than your grandparents did, and your grandparents lived better lives than their grandparents did. And a big part of that is the abundance of energy that we've been able to harvest and use to our benefit. 200 years ago, you had to work 84 hours to afford one hour of artificial light. Today, you have to work 1.5 seconds to afford an hour of artificial light. We've moved from candles, to oil lamps, to incandescent bulbs, to LEDs. We've seen a one trillion times increase in the efficiency of computation. A modern processor can do 17 trillion calculations with one kilowatt second of energy. Now what happens when we get very efficient? We use more of these things. Artificial light has gotten very inexpensive, so we use a lot of it. Air transport has gotten very inexpensive, so we use a lot of it. Computation has gotten very inexpensive, so we even have Snapchat. 
What happens when unlimited demand meets finite resources? The answer is incredibly simple, rationing. That's the path that we would be on. And that path does not lead, it would lead for the first time to where your grandchildren and their grandchildren would have worse lives than you. That's a bad path. There's good news. The good news is that if we move out into the solar system, for all practical purposes, we have unlimited resources. So, we get to choose. Do we want stasis and rationing? Or do we want dynamism and growth? This is an easy choice. We know what we want, we just have to get busy. If we're out in the solar system, we can have a trillion humans in the solar system, which means we'd have a thousand Mozarts and a thousand Einsteins. This would be an incredible civilization. We get to preserve this unique gem of a planet which is completely irreplaceable. There is no plan B. We have to save this planet. And we shouldn't give up a future for our grandchildren's grandchildren of dynamism and growth. We can have both. Who is going to do this work? Not me. These kids in the front rows, you guys are going to do this, and your children are going to do this. This is going to take a long time. This is a big vision. And what you're going to do is you're going to build whole industries. There are going to be thousands of future companies doing this work. A whole ecosystem of entrepreneurial activity unleashed, creative people coming up with new ideas about how to use space. Let me tell you a story about Amazon. In 1994, I started Amazon. All of the heavy lifting infrastructure needed for Amazon to exist was already in place. We did not have to build a transportation system to deliver packages. It existed already. If we had had to build that, it would have been billions of dollars in capital. The same thing with payment system. Did we have to invent a payment system and roll that out? That would have been billions of dollars in many decades. But no, it already existed. It was called the credit card. Did we have to build a telecom network? That would have been billions of dollars. But we didn't. It was in place mostly to make long distance phone calls and built by global telecom carriers like AT&T and their equivalents around the world. Infrastructure lets entrepreneurs do amazing things. So the kids here and your children and their grandchildren, you're gonna build those O'Neill colonies. This generation's job, my generation's job, is to build the infrastructure so that you'll be able to. We're gonna build a road to space. And then amazing things will happen. Then you'll see entrepreneurial creativity. Then you'll have space entrepreneurs start a company in their dorm room. Please make no mistake about this. Earth is the best planet. We do need to protect it. It's essential, it's our job. We're now big enough to hurt this planet. We have to use the resources of space. We must have a future for our grandchildren and their grandchildren of dynamism. We cannot let them fall prey to stasis and rationing. And it's this generation's job to build that road to space so that the future generations can unleash their creativity. This vision sounds very big and it is. None of this is easy, all of it is hard. But I want to inspire you, and so think about this. Big things start small. That's one small step for man. One.